guys, it's Julia here, and in this video, we are going to be going over how to set up LAPS. Now, Dude Fox, would you like to explain what LAPS is? So, LAPS stands for Local Administrator Password Solution. This was created by Microsoft when they had to release an update that no longer allows you to change the administrator password in group policy. This was done in 2008R2, and I believe it was a security issue that they had. So what we're gonna do is install and set that up. It's not as simple as download and install, you're done. There's some things you need to do after it gets installed, and you have to install a client on every computer that you're gonna run it on. Yep. So we're gonna start out by simply downloading LAPS. Um, we'll put the link in the description to it for a direct download to Microsoft's download link page. But for this, we're going to Google. And we're going to Google for a LAPS download. First link. Here we can see the download page. We'll put a link to this in the description to make it easy for y'all. So we're going to go ahead and click download and we're, since we're only doing, since we only have 64 bit clients, we're going to download 64 bit. Yep. Your download. So we're going to go ahead and save this. All right. So first thing we're going to do is install it on our server. So we're logged on under our admin user that we created. We're going to just install it now because this is the server and this is where you're going to be getting your password from we need to install our management tools now may i ask is this on the domain admin or the local admin that you're installing this on um local admin is not accessible unless you enter the domain services recovery mode so you're so, in the domain user yes all right LAPS only works through a domain because of the way group policy works. Yep. So we're going to install the so-called fat client UI. <laughs> what? That's what it's called. Okay. And as well as the PowerShell modules and the group policy editor templates. So we're going to go ahead and install those along with the GPO extensions. Accept our UAC. Click on finish. Now we also need, we're going to deploy this out to our computers or client systems using group policy. So we're going to drop this into the share folder that we created when we looked at group policy. So there, we'll just need to memorize that name for later on. All right. Now that we have that installed, we need to run a couple of commands in PowerShell. This is to properly set up group policy and other stuff for laps. So yeah. the first one you're going to need to run, so we're going to launch PowerShell as admin. So the first one we need to do is import dash module ADM PWD. What happened there? Oh, we forgot dot PS. Oops. There we go. So now we can update dash ADM PWD AD schema. So this will update the, the Active Directory schema, schema with the necessary permissions and whatnot. Yep. So next what we need to do is give our systems access, or more specifically the OU of the computers. So we can figure that out by going into group Active Directory users and computers looking in our directory and see, let's see, was it members or, okay, so we can see that it's the client's OU right here. So the command we will do is set dash a d m p w d computer self permission dash org unit IT, which stands for organizational unit. This is where you're going to give it the path of the OU and then our domain, which we called YouTube.local. So we imported our module, updated our Active Directory schema. Now we're gonna give the OU, which is called clients, which is where our computers are in Active Directory. So 
basically we're gonna give the OU called clients, which we created in the group policy video, which is where our clients are located, our computers. We're gonna give that permission to write the password and the expiration date, which this command does. So now it's given the permissions. Next thing we need to do is run two more commands, which gives a group. So we're just gonna give the, Let's see, did we create a group for laps? We have not, so let's create a group for laps. We're just gonna call it laps, okay. So next thing we need to do is give that group read and reset permissions. So we're gonna do set dash ADM PWD read password permission. There will be a link to a guide in the description on the commands and other things you can do, you will you need to do. So for the most part, it's pretty similar. We just, we need to specify our OU. Uh, I believe it's dash allowed principles. And that's where we specify our group, which we created and called laps. Uh-oh. I must have spelled that wrong. Let me try that again. There we go. And pretty much we can hit up and change the set ADM PWD read. You can also just change that to reset. Sorry guys, I'm having audio problems. Go ahead. More like Computer's just being a piece of garbage. All right, go on. What did you just do here? So we gave the laps group permission to read and reset the password, and you have to specify the OU, which we specified above for the self permission, which is the client's OU. So now we're pretty much set up apart from, we need to give our user, our admin users, permission, or we need to, we need to give them the group. That's as simple as specifying laps, applying that, and then we need to relog. All right. So now laps is fully set up and we can deploy laps to our computers. Are you logging back in or? Yes. I can hit the right button. This looks like the local admin, though. It's not. Oh, it's the admin you created. Yes. But it didn't look like the Active Directory sign-in. Every Active Directory setup will be different. Alright. So now what we need to do is... We're going to use Group Policy to deploy out our installer. So we're going to go up to clients. We created a group policy called startup. So we'll just add it in there. That's under policies, computer configuration, policies, software settings, install or software installation. We're gonna create a new package. Next, we need to give it the UNC path, which is slash slash, I think it was server 2019 slash files dollar sign. And then our files path that we have hidden. And there's our MSI file that we'll deploy out to our systems. We're going to leave it as assigned. And we're just going to make sure our settings look correct. And they do. So now this is set up. So now what we can do is go over to our enterprise. And then we're going to restart our system. And if we watch startup, we will see it actually install apps because we enabled highly detailed status messages. Yep. That was fast. <laughs> I didn't say it. Sometimes it's so quick you don't see it. It all depends on the computer. But we can check it by logging in and looking at our add and remove programs list. Mm 
let's hope it's there. Hmm. Alright. It did not install that time. Let's run a group policy update. This should pull down the new policy for the installer. So this should fix that. Yep. It says it can't be installed because it'll need to reboot. So we'll go ahead and tell it to restart. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to forcefully reboot it. It's taken longer this time to boot. It's really thinking about this one. Here it goes. There it goes. I saw it that time. I saw it that time. Are you there? So now if we log on... I saw it do it. You can check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure I saw it. So if we go check our programs list... It's gonna be there. Yep, there it is. I saw it. Yep, right there. So if we head back over to the server, we can set up our password management. So that's none via group policy. Again, we'll use the startup policy. If we go under policies and administrative templates, we'll see a folder called laps. So from there, so we're going to configure our password settings. Enable. So we can specify the length how old the password will be before it resets, and what the password contains. We're just going to leave it at defaults, but let's turn this down to like 10 days. 10 days. The next setting is the name of the account we want to change. We're going to leave it alone, so it'll be the built-in administrator. So this will basically say once the password expiration hits, change it immediately on next group policy update. And then this is to enable or disable. To disable what? This is to enable or disable laps from changing the password. Okay. So we've enabled it to change the password and we've set up our password settings. So now on next reboot of that system or next group policy update, Let's go ahead and update our policies. And we can see our computer policy updated successfully, so did our user. That now means our administrator password has been changed. We can confirm this by loading up the fat client on- Go ahead and say what you were saying again. I'm about to go on your computer, find out what the heck is broken, fix it. I don't know what it's- it's been doing this since yesterday. Well, as we can see, once we did our group policy update after enabling the laps policy, it has set a password on that system, and it will reset on this day and this time. We can, of course, force that by setting it to this day and this time, which is literally passed. It's already passed, so that means on next group policy update, this will change. Yep. And that's laps. So so that's just to change the um, built-in admin. Yeah, that's to keep the built-in administrator account password protected. And the thing about it is that it's unique for every computer. So you can get the information from the server of what that computer's built-in admin password is. You could do that, or they could set it up in a way... You could install the fat client on any computer. As long as the computer is connected to the domain and you're logged on under the correct user with appropriate rights. And then you can access the passwords. Yes. And it's always good to have this because the built-in admin by default does not have a password. And that is a big security risk. Even though the account is disabled, someone could enable it and then have access to the computer. So it's... If you remember in the last video, I believe we did re enable the, pa the administrator account. Yeah, so it's you need to have a password on the built-in admin. And one more question, does Laps only work on the built-in admin account? No, it can work on any and it can work on any account that you specify. So if you had a certain user account maybe on the domain for a certain user, you can make their password 
change. But then again, and that'd be silly be because worse. they would have to find out what the password is every time. That's the point. So it's mainly just good for the built-in admin is what you're saying. It's good for any system. Most businesses or IT people will tell you to disable the administrator account and create a local administrator account and change the password for that, which is the same thing. You have a local admin when you need to change stuff, but you also have... Your admin. It, yeah. But obviously, I guess, um, having this on the built-in admin is more security. You, technically, you could do more than one. You would just need multiple group policies for them. Yes. So, guys, I guess that's laps. Is there anything else to say? Not really. It's mostly just once you get all that set up, it's as simple as type in the name and the fat client. Boop, you got your password. Nice. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Say bye. Bye.